Thank you very much. So welcome to IBM. Um, good discussion on creativity. It's, this is a day of kind of step back out of my day job. I was asked to do this, but I also spent lunch in a lunch and learn with some of the interns here at IBM. So it's actually given me an opportunity to kind of step back and think about my career um, and how I got here. And I was a IT programmer as I graduated out of college over 20 years ago, and that's all I'll say. And, um, you know, and I think about the creativity. I mean, I think what makes me successful in my day to day is my creativity of problem solving. And to problem solve, you have to be creative. And I don't program anymore, but I am in uh, technology and I drive a lot of strategy and change across IBM. And if you asked me, you know, 20 years ago, where would I be career wise? I don't think it would have been, you know, where I am today. I have taken a different course, but if of career, I don't know that I took a traditional career course path, if you will. And when I go through the presentation here that, you know, candidly comes from our HR organization of all of the programs we have is um, in support of the women that we have here as leaders across IBM. You know, I really have to step back and recognize that I was fortunate enough to find myself in a company that did recognize uh, the need to have a very diverse uh, global set of talent across uh, IBM and has, you know, I'll talk very specifically about the programs we have here for women, but as I thought and talked to the interns about the day-to-day -day of how we manage and help mentor um, people through IBM, the list is extensive on what IBM does and invests in to help nurture people um, and help them achieve their careers in IBM. So I guess uh, I stand here pretty grateful today to be a part of, of a company that does invest in their people. So hopefully I'll share and give you some of that perspective through these presentations. Um, so a little bit of history here, obviously a focus on you know women as I was asked to speak about, but if you look across the board, you can see as federal legislation came out, out over the years, IBM has always been well ahead of where our federal government has led us as far as um, women in the workforce, minorities, uh, the gay and lesbians. So you definitely see a very diverse uh, population within IBM, uh, both you know, from that perspective and then geographically as we work globally with the different cultures, et cetera. Um, it absolutely started in 1953 with a clear policy that we would hire people who have the right background. And so again, it's about the understanding that diverse people bring a diverse background, therefore diverse thinking and helping us be creative in different kinds of solutions and scenarios. And then this kind of really is twofold point for me because now as we stand here today, we see Ginny Rometty as a leader, a woman leading IBM and obviously continuing the importance of diversity. In IBM each year, we're asked as an individual IBM employee to take a diversity course. So it's a reminder every year on the importance of diversity um, and that there's a no, you know, there is no policy, you know, exception around anything but accepting and embracing the diverse population that we have here in IBM. This chart gives you a little bit of, you know, it, it's part of my, I'm here today as an IBM executive and woman. Um, IBM hired their first women in 1899. You can see their first uh, female executive, Ruth, uh, in 1943, uh, down to our first fellow, IBM fellow in 1989. And we'll talk about the different programs varying on the different types of career path you want to take um, as a woman in IBM. Um, from a last year, end of year statement, our overall population, uh, women make up almost about 30% of that population, 25% of our managers, and then 21.5% of the executive population worldwide. And you can see that executive uh, population is continually growing and I would say that as I go through some of the detailed programs IBM has in place you'll see the work that's being done to foster that growth. You'll also see the increase in working mothers which I am one of those so I'm both an IBM executive as well as a working mother and part of why I would say I didn't take the standard course or career path was because I had two children 
and I definitely took a path of saying while there are internal or external or uh, client facing roles where we need to be in front of the client and travel, et cetera, or there are international assignments, anything that really was an extensive um, out of the state travel or assignment was something I was not interested in taking so that I could balance um, the family that I had at home. Um, and I have demonstrated that that is indeed possible to do. Um, so why is IBM doing so well in leadership across our women's population? There's a, an enormous number of programs that I'll try and give you a sampling of, of the work that's done to um, start reaching out to uh, young women before they're even in you know, K through 12 on being engineers and thinking technically, uh, how we work with the different universities, and then also um, what the programs are in place once as a woman you enter IBM and, and how, what is done to really help you along in your career. And then IBM does this on many fronts, not just on their program for women, but for their managers. Do a lot of surveys, self-correct, feedback to continue to challenge and, and manage things better. And we measure everything, no doubt. Um, so here's a kind of smattering of some of the programs. The bottom left, lighter pink there, and where you see outreach, that's the set of initiatives and work that's in place to really help reach those younger children, K to 12. Um, take your child uh, to work day has been here forever. Um, it's taken on more. I think you see more and more of the companies doing it. Mentor Me is very new. It's a Facebook. Um, way of reaching out and connecting with some of those younger children, both in the K to 12, and then again, the Mentor Me you see at the top right, recruiting, which is our programs where we're really looking to reach out to the college and university students. So as an example, there's a program in China where we had uh, 100 women in technology paired up with 100 university students in China. They mentored, there was a whole facilitated program for them. Some of those hundred become internships in IBM. And then you involve that into the darker, which is, so here's where you are on some of the um, programs that you have. Whoops, did I do that? There you go. Some of the actual programs once you're in IBM and how they help to nurture you as a woman in your career path. All right, there's a lot of different forums of, as women become leaders in IBM, many of them give back and step up to really lead some of these different programs, mentoring, subnets. Um, I, I continue to mentor people and still have many, many mentors today that I rely on to help me as I make my way through my career. So I talked a little bit about IBM measures, right? We get feedback, we check ourselves against the, you know, feedback we get from the people at IBM. And you can see here, over time, right, what are viewed as the barriers that many women feel they face as they try and advance career-wise. So I talked a little bit about the difficulty of balancing work and personal life, and you can see that was in 1997 um, the number two concern that has and continues to stay for, you know, and, and now your number four concern. Um, I think that I would always say to people, and I say this to people as I mentor them, IBM really offers a number of programs that will help you balance the family and work, but ultimately it's up to you to really take advantage of those programs and to manage it. Um, that's not to say when I was running out of the office at five o'clock because I had to get them from daycare that I didn't feel guilty when people were like, Yvonne, you're taking a half day? Are you leaving? Where are you going, right? Because everybody else was staying until seven. I have definitely shut down on days and felt guilty that I did, but really at the end of the day and how I work with the people that work for me that are trying to do that balance is I always try and keep my sights on the end goal and the end objective, not the day-to-day -day hours punched in, et cetera. Um, let's see, what was the other? Um, the other one you see is also the men's willingness to take risks with women in job opportunities. That has really lowered as well to the point where it's off the chart. So a lot, again, focus on getting everybody comfortable that women can bring a different talent to the table, they can do the balance of work life, and they can be key contributors. Um, this is, talks about a program that IBM has called Taking the Stage. It's a four-part video-based program, and it really is designed for the women in IBM, the corporate women, to help them 
um, with their strengths, their leaderships, to give them a mentoring and a network to which they can then work and bounce different ideas off of. Um, it's been in place for over seven years. Um, just last year alone in the U.S., over 500 um, women participated in this program. It's another program. So I, there are a lot of different programs in IBM. This one actually um, started in, one, in our Global Business Services Division in Northeast um, Europe. And it was considered such a success that they took it and made it a best practice and made it available uh, globally to women around the world. So this is a combination of both in person, but then also virtual as we work more and more globally. Um, always our challenge is how do you network globally when you're not in an office location every day with the same working people, you're on the phone with them, et cetera. Um, so this kind of plays on that, right? So there is a prep course up front, there's a two day in person, and then two and a half day in person, and then there's the continued networking and connection that the teams will then do virtually. Um, we've had over a thousand women uh, worldwide participate in this program. Let's talk a little bit about some uh, sample best practices. Uh, we have various different groups that are led. Uh, we clearly celebrated uh, women in their international day and our centennial last year. Um, you know, Sandy sends out and does a lot of good communication. You know, oftentimes we run these networks. There are women in technology networks, et cetera, but they're not closed door. Men are welcome to them. I would say some of my best mentors have been men. You know, it's a combination of uh, looking to other women as good mentors and leadership and how they've achieved those roles. But clearly, you know, there's a definite need to understand the difference in how men or women would operate or function. And so knowing and understanding that helps you as you mentor your way through and work for you know, various leaders in IBM. So there, I talked a little bit about the programs they had for the K through 12, the programs we have with the universities, the internal programs we have in IBM, and then this gives you just a sampling of a, a list of organizations that help mentor women today that IBM partners with. Um, the one second to the bottom there, Women's Unlimited, is a program that IBM invested in me and sent me to, I would say, probably about 12 years ago. I participated in the LEAD uh, program. And it probably helped me really understand that everything I learned in school was going to help me do the assignments day to day. But it was really the networking, um, the creativity, the how do I you know, set my goals and go after it that were more important. If I think back in my career and how I, you know, my education, I was a resident assistant. I did a lot of community work. I have two kids in high school now. You know, community work is definitely a big component. It's not just about going to school. It's about having a job, about doing the community service. I think that's very important because I believe why I'm successful today is really not everything I learned on the books and in class, but the work that I did on projects, the work that I did, you know, those projects are huge as it relates to the dynamics of the team. So, you know, my son comes home and says, well, this one did the research, this one did the biography, and my job is to put the presentation together. I go, that's not a good assignment of work <laughs> balance, right? So those kind of projects are, to me, more real life of what you go through in work when you're trying to figure out the dynamics of the different people, what their strengths are, and how you're going to successfully deliver the end project right, are those kind of experiences that will help us get those students ready for real life, right? So my resident assistant was huge for me. Three years of trying to manage, you know, the school administration having rules and friends who didn't want to follow the rules and I was smack in the middle trying to make sure nobody was getting hurt or in trouble but that we were, you know, following the administration rules and all of my negotiating, collaborative, kind of how do I make myself through this situation were huge for me, I think, on how I then took that forward into corporate America and, and really made my career on getting people together collaboratively around a strategy or a change. IBM continues to be recognized for the globally women that we have in our leadership teams. Um, some points here, you, obviously the working mothers media continue to be 
um, recognizing that from the beginning of the time when those recognitions were in place. Um, you can see uh, the top company for technical women there. Why do I keep doing that? Oh, we're not going back to the beginning. Um, so, you know, obviously there's good media and recognition. Again, I would say, you know, I have peers that would tell you, you know, I don't know, that work-life balance, it's a joke because I'm working 7 to 7 and back on the system at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I would agree, there are a lot of days that I do that. But on the days when I say I have to go to this baseball game or that and I carve it out on my calendar and I leave, that's on me to manage. So yeah, I could be working those extensive hours, but if I can work them around and fit in that personal balance, to me that's a win and you have to manage that. And that's something I've just really had to learn over the years of you know, my kids getting bigger and me elevating on the pressures of the job. So that's what I had. I, I did want to leave a few minutes for any questions. Um, I wanted to make sure you were getting something out of, you know, I knew the topic I was asked for, but was anything anyone wanted to ask or I didn't talk about? Hmm. There's a program, it was on there, it's called eWeek. It's Engineering Week and IBM partners with other companies and does that, goes into the schools. I have participated in that and we have gone into classrooms of fourth grade. So we have started that early, we go in and, you know, we try and show them that, you know, engineering is, can be fun and how you problem solve, et cetera. So I know IBM will start as early as fourth grade as the programs I've participated in. But I mean, I saw that with my daughter. Her math was off the scales, you know, in fourth grade. And by seventh grade, she was like, yeah, I don't do this math thing. And I was like, what are you talking about, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's interesting for me because I see it here and then I have the kids going through it, right? And I, you know, I, for me, when they say I don't like this teacher, guess what? You're going to have a lot of bosses you don't like. Figure it out. Figure out what makes them give you that 100. Because you go into corporate IBM, what makes them give you that rating at the end of the year and the increase, whether they like you or not? You have to deliver to their style. So I, I find it unfortunate. I always try and translate for my kids when they're frustrated in school. This is a life lesson. This is, you know, when they come home, they complain about the coach or movement. Everybody else's mother called and gave them, got their, my daughter had her cell phone taken away from her. Call. If you call, they'll give it back to me. No, you broke the rule. You're not, I'm not doing that for you. So I'm never the favored mother, for sure. <laughs> but for me, I always put it back on them on, that's a life lesson, right? How you deal with that parent or that teacher or another student got credit for the work, okay, live and learn. Don't sign yourself up to be the one doing the presentation that everybody dumped it on you and you didn't have a checkpoint that said I had enough material to do my task. Because at the end of the day, he ended up having to find more material and update the bibliography, and so he ended up doing soup to nuts. But they, you know, did the handoff and never regrouped. Are you still coming into the office every day? Coming yeah, I um, probably, I, am, I consider myself very lucky because I probably, I come into the office maybe twice a week. Um, I know some of our employees struggle with the work, the, while they like working remote, on an ongoing basis, it gets tired. There is that need or desire to run into folks. I have a great balance. So I'm here today, I was in Somers yesterday, I'm off tomorrow, but the Monday and Tuesday I worked from home. So, I, and for me that's a perfect balance. As I walked out yesterday, I bumped into an executive I haven't worked with in three years, and as I walked out and he walked out, we got to catch up. You'll never get that when you're working remote on an ongoing basis. So hopefully I, I was helpful for you. I, you know, the future is in your hands and I, it's an incredible job and I uh, thank you for that. <laughs>